welcome to this video where we're going to put two horses together that don't know each other, haven't met each other before, and we're going to do this in a neutral space in the indoor arena that is not part of anybody's territory, so we're trying to make it as neutral as possible so that way we have a chance to observe their passive leadership to see who becomes the leader out of these two horses. Now we're going to be using a gelding and a filly that haven't met each other before and it should be pretty interesting. So let's take a look and we can see what the passive leadership looks like. All right, so we're going to release the two horses here. The bay horse is the gelding, so he's already loose. And then the appy horse is the uh, mare. So interesting is that he walked over to come say hello and she's like, no, nope, don't want to say hello to you just yet. I'm going to uh, not do that right now. So she just goes off walking a little circle. And maybe that's because she just wants to stretch her legs and move. Or maybe that's because she's being passively dominant, wanting to kind of set the tone that she wants to sniff noses on her terms and not his terms. We will have to watch and see who ends up becoming the passive dominant leader in this relationship here. So interesting that he was in the back left and then she kind of made a turn and he ended up on the back right and they're just kind of standing there for a second and she's got a very alert posture on. She's very upright in her neck posture, very, very alert kind of stance and interesting that he's kind of doing a little bit of sniffing and he's got more of a relaxed stance in his posture. And then he's coming up to say hello, but interesting, she walks forward and blocks him and kind of says no and and kind of blocks that. And then she brings her head around and is like, okay, now I'm ready to sniff noses with you and say hello. It's pretty typical with horses that they're going to sniff a little bit. And then there you can see she does a bit of a squeal to end that handshake, so to speak. And he starts to kind of sniff at her belly, her flank area a little bit. And they touch noses a little bit more. She offers to touch noses. And then she's stopping the conversation. So see how she kind of sidestepped into him a little bit there and blocked that? So those are all passively dominant moves, uh, trying to tell him kind of what she thinks about the situation there. So she very much wanted to initiate those hand touches that I call them hand touches when, because that's what we do when we're working with the horses, we do hand touches. For them, it's nose touches. So she very much wanted to initiate those and then, of course, take them away as well. And then you can see he tried to do some changes of speed and direction where he went off and walked a circle and she basically stood her ground and was like, no, I'm not I'm not going to follow you, your direction. And then interesting here, she goes off to walk away and uh, he's following her. So he's now following her direction. And then she stops and now he stops. So right now he's following her speed, her direction. He's sniffing her, her butt a little bit here. And we can't see too well from this angle, but he's actually kind of nudging her tail a little bit and kind of being a bit annoying, rubbing on her, her butt. So she does lay out one kind of kick there where she's like, hey, like, don't be around my butt. So there's some assertive leadership and so we know with horses that we typically see assertive leadership when it has to do with food or protecting friends or protecting yourself but otherwise horses don't typically establish dominance off of um, like chasing or kicking at each other biting each other is not is not typical horse behavior for establishing who is the dominant one that's more off of um, passive leadership things so see how uh, the appy is appy named poppy is taking the conversation she's like let's go over here let's go to this end of the arena so she sets that direction and then bailey who is the bay gelding he's following so she's very much being a passive leader here and she only was assertive when he was really uh, challenging her space and really kind of getting his nose up in her butt and she had to defend her personal space. But otherwise, you see, there's there's no chasing of these two horses. There's no biting of each other. There's no kicking out at each other. So it's interesting that when a lot of people want to work with horses, they think that they have to do a lot of moving of the horse's feet or running them to establish that dominance and respect. But that's not really how horse behavior goes. And so this is just one example of two horses having this kind of conversation 
and doing different things, but we could do this with lots of different horses. The key, of course, is that it needs to be set up in a neutral space. So by taking these two horses, there's no friends that they're trying to protect. There's no hay that they're trying to guard. And this is an arena that is neutral territory. It doesn't belong to either of these horses. It's not like you take one horse and put it into the field of another horse. So it really lets you observe horse behavior in in a very neutral setting where they don't fear, feel threatened or defensive the way that they can if they've got a friend to protect or something like that. So that was really interesting right there where uh, Poppy basically kind of ran forward and put Bailey into her back left quadrant and was kind of saying like, you know, I'm going to control the situation here a little bit as Bailey's walking around. And then interesting here, she's doing a little halt. So it's almost like she's trying to check in and say, okay, will you stop and be more polite in that quadrant now? And she's kind of looking and checking in. And you'll notice that Bailey's being a lot more polite this time. She's not having to uh, defend her space. He's standing there very nicely. So she got the message across the first time. She did it. She did, made a correction once firmly, like, don't go up my butt. And he's got the message. So there when he starts to walk forward again, uh, she starts to come forward. And then I shoo her away because I didn't want her coming over to see me. So she's going to go head off to that other end of the arena and go see what's happening. And then notice that Bailey is going to follow. So he is following her direction. So this is one of the easiest ways to kind of see who is the leader. It, now remember, there are three different ways that we recognize passive leadership and changes of direction. Choosing the direction is just one of the three ways to take a look at passive leadership. So this is interesting that she came down to look at the end of the arena, which is a very good leader move because that's what Bailey was interested in before. And so she's kind of playing that game with him of being interested in what he was interested in. And so now he's very interested in her and kind of looking to direction for her. It was interesting talking to um, Poppy's owner because they said that Poppy typically, if you let her loose in the arena, she's not interested in anything. She doesn't go around and explore anything. She, she just kind of stays in her spot. There she kind of blocked her space again when he was pushing, he was pushing boundaries a little bit there. And so they said it was really cool to watch that with Bailey in the arena, she was actually going around and checking things out a lot more. And she's, you know, sniffed the barrels, checked out the mirror. She's uh, moved around and expected a, f a few things. And Bailey is very much following her direction. He went to the mirrors and he went to the barrels. And now he's coming around and following her going over here. So she's very independent of him. And he is very much following the suggestions that she's doing. So here he ends up walking right kind of past her and gets kind of curious and starts to come up to the front of the arena and is just kind of curious and kind of leaves her off in the distance over there. So he kind of comes up to check out the people that are up here. And of course, you're going to have distractions and things that are going on. And what's what I find fascinating is how Bailey's kind of checking out his own stuff. But notice how Poppy doesn't come up and be interested in what Bailey's interested in. She's kind of standing her ground way back in the distance and Bailey's checking things out and being interested up here. And she's like, no, I'm not gonna follow your lead. I don't feel uh, the need to follow you up here. So I kind of shoo him away. I'm holding a dressage whip to, to ask him to go away from me a little bit. And so he heads back over to go say hello to Miss Poppy over there. He's like, all right, well, that didn't work. Come down to the end of the arena. So she's, he's walking over there to say hello to her again. And, and interesting, she just chooses, yeah, I'm not going to sniff your nose. I'm going to go this direction over here. So it's so cool. Now, different horses, different personalities. You're going to see a lot of different horse behaviors. But what you're watching for is the three different passive leadership ways that we see that happen and, and checking to see who's giving those passive signs. And then you get to see all of these little intricacies of how the horses are interacting without chasing, without kicking, without biting at each other, and uh, with the exception of when they had to defend their own personal space. So nobody is saying I'm the boss by making the other one, you know, run around or 
or getting aggressive or anything like that. That's reserved. Assertive leadership is reserved for um, if they're protecting food, friends, or themselves. The three reasons for that. And I think it's a really good, important point to just observe horses in these neutral spaces so we can get a feel and an appreciation for how they they intrigue each other. How do they get the other horse want to come over and say hello? How do they become that leader of the relationship without doing these assertive tasks? So it's really cool. So Bailey's coming up to say hello to the humans again, wants to say hello. And again, Poppy's just kind of staying down there like, eh, I'm not, I'm not interested in following your lead. I'm going to stay down here and do my own thing. So it's pretty, pretty cool. So you definitely see different things in different horses. So these guys are relatively uninterested in each other. I would say they're both kind of mildly more dominant. So they, they tend to kind of do their own thing a little bit. But hopefully you guys found this interesting. Would love to see in the comments if you observed anything different or if you could see any of that making sense. So thanks for watching, guys.